Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm here to talk about the struggle wash day. I think we've all experienced this and I've heard a lot of friends talk about it, but I finally kind of had one recently so I thought this would be the perfect time to do a video. So basically you start washing your hair and things start to go wrong and you're like a deer in headlights, you're like what do I do? You know a lot of my friends told me that they got so much breakage and things went so wrong. So I'm here to help you out and kind of let you know some of my tips for avoiding disaster on wash day and how to know when to push through and when to bail. So you should try to keep your hair in good condition to avoid getting into struggle wash days. So keep it moisturized, don't let it dry out too much. Keep your ends healthy. If it's starting to go a little haywire, get your trim. Things like that will just kind of prevent the ones where you could have done better, basically. The wash days where you could have done better. So that would be my first tip. And the second tip is to always have your HD products on standby if you're trying new products. Always have your HD products on standby, always, if possible. So whether it's just that you left your hair too long, whether it's just that the weather is messing with you or whatever, your air sheets could always be on hand to save the day. And hopefully you found some good ones, at least looking at all my reviews and demos and stuff, you found some good products to be your air sheet for every step of your wash day in case you need to reach for it. Especially your air sheet, deep conditioners, moisturizers and detanglers because those are the ones that you really need to have a successful wash day as a natural. When I say stop, I mean reach for your HG products and save yourself. That's what I mean. I don't just mean stop and like go dry your hair, but I mean stop and save basically. Save a fro. <laughs> save a fro in other words. Getting the HG either for that step or for the next step as necessary. If it's a cleanser, most times the problem with cleansers is that it's too stripping, so you'd want to skip to the next step and get your HG deep conditioner. But if the problem is with the deep conditioner, then you can probably rinse the bad one and apply your HD deep conditioner after to save the day. The main reasons to stop, <laughs> abort, reach for the HD. If your hair becomes super dry, if it becomes super tangled, if it becomes super matted, super frizzy, or if your strands are breaking, or if you're not experiencing enough slip in your hair while you're doing your wash day. Just anything that you feel you can't recover from, and you can't really, you know, go through the week or whatever with that situation. Then stop and get your safe products. So I'm going to show you some clips for my wash day. But basically, you know, things were going fine. Normal wash day. I started with my co-wash. So I was using a new co-wash and they mentioned that you could leave it in. So I put it on. Everything was fine. I was like, oh, okay, leave it in after 15 minutes. Let me leave it in a little bit and see what starts to happen but it didn't go in the right direction from there. My hair started to kind of frizz out. So it wasn't super stripped or anything, but that co-wash wasn't one for me to leave in basically. And that was the first step in my wash day. So take a look at the clip. <laughs> So as you can see, my hair was frizzy. Did I stop or not? No, because it was frizzy, but it wasn't completely stripped. It still felt soft enough and moisturized enough that I could kind of continue with my program. I wasn't super happy after the result, but it wasn't a stop. It had enough slip to where I could work through my hair. It wasn't too drying, no tangles. It was just a frizz and probably I could have been more moisturizing. So I continued. Next, I used a new deep conditioner that I haven't used before. And at this point, I'm in recovery mode because the co-wash already was a little drying. So I needed something a little extra amazing. And this deep conditioner was a little less than amazing. So another wonk wonk potential freak out moment. I applied the deep conditioner and it felt like if nothing was happening, my hair was eating it, but it still wasn't giving me that moisture and softness and so on that I need from a deep conditioner, especially if I had a drying cleanser experience. So I kind of panicked. The slip was subpar. It became slightly okay after I added like the entire jar of deep conditioner in my hair, but it was still a little subpar. So again, I was a little bit nervous. Did I stop or did I continue? I continued again. And the reason I did that was because after it sat on my hair for a little while, 
it started to give me that moisture, that hydration, and that softness that I need from a deep conditioner. So it didn't feel like amazing, like the best ever, but it felt good enough to continue. So again, I continued. This is my hair, kind of when I was scared. <laughs> and then this is my hair after, like, okay, fine. Conditioner Sapa, we still doing this wash day. You could, it was it was an experience, it was a traumatic experience as you can tell. So next up, I went to the deep conditioner. My hair felt a little bit less great, but I was already at the point where I was like, okay, let me just moisturize and keep it pushing because it wasn't that horrible that I felt like I needed to deep condition again. But of course, like I said, dryness, tangles, lack of slip, matting, breaking. If any of that had happened while I was deep conditioning or after rinsing, then I would have been the point to stop and save by using one of my HG deep conditioners. So if the cleanser is bad, deep condition. If the deep conditioner is bad, deep condition. So bad co-wash experience, bad deep conditioning experience. What's next? My leave-in. So again, I mean, this was a really interesting wash day, right? Again, the leave-in was kind of subpar. So the issues with the leave-in, the slip wasn't great. And I didn't really define my curls. I put leave in. I even put a little bit more to see if anything would happen, but it didn't really do that much for me. The moisture was there, but not the slip or the definition. The slip wasn't horrible. I could still use it, so I didn't stop. Again, if the slip was horrible, you know what I do. <laughs> yeah. So the conditions for stopping were not there because I still had enough slip and enough moisture for me to get by. Even if a leave-in doesn't define my curls, I will still push through it for me personally because I don't mind frizz that much. Moisture is my main thing, so as long as the moisture is there, I'll push through. Now, if the leave-in was just completely horrible, of course, rinse on a board and get your HD leave-in and use that. If the leave-in was okay but slip was lacking, you can add a little bit of your favorite detangling leave-in over it. If the leave-in was okay but moisture was lacking, you can add a bit of your favorite moisturizer or cream over it. And of course, if the definition was lacking, you can add a little bit of your favorite styling product over it. So since I was going to add a gel anyway, I decided to just keep going and push on to the next step. So I did not stop at the leave-in. So bad coach experience, bad DC experience, bad leave-in experience, and I'm going through this, I'm getting through it. My hair is all moisturized and frizzy from the leave-in. Time for the gel. I was trying all new products. Everything I was trying was new. I never tried the co-wash before, never tried the DC or the leave-in or the gel before. So here I am at the end of my wash day and I'm gonna try the gel. So the gel texture-wise was okay. It seemed just a regular old gel. So I'm going in, I noticed that feeling where my moisture is going away. I'm like, oh snap. So the leave-in was moisturizing, but not too defining. And now the gel is trying to take my moisture, why? <laughs> anyway, so I'm putting it on, the moisture is going. The slip was just okay. Did I stop? No, because the slip was enough to get me by and the moisture wasn't all the way gone, it was just going. So it just dropped a little bit, but, and I did feel like the gel had that kind of sealing property that maybe I'd be able to get by with the reduced moisture so that it'll go from super moisturized to just really moisturized and I'd be fine. And it was doing a decent job in terms of curl definition and everything. So it wasn't great in terms of those, but it was okay. It was a good enough gel, so I decided to push through it. So I didn't stop at the gel. Now, if the gel is sucky, things are kind of bad because you don't want to rinse it out and start over. But what I do in that case is I either, okay, the gel was sucky in this first section, my, and use my HG gels for the other sections. Like that's perfectly fine, at least for my hair, because I mix and match products. And like if my products are finishing, I would use like one in each section everywhere until, you know, just using the ends everywhere. Like I could have different leave-in in each section, I'm totally fine. So for me, if my gel sucks or 
my cream or anything above the leave-in sucks. I would just stop after that one section and in the other sections I would apply my HGs. But I didn't have to do that in this case because it wasn't that bad. It depends on what's wrong with the gel too. So if the gel seems like it's going to be dry or crunchy, I fix that by putting my more moisturizing gel over it. And of course my hair doesn't get flakes a lot. So if you get flakes, you have to be careful with these solutions, but it works for me. So if you are not too prone to flakes or you're willing to risk it, you can try just putting some of your preferred gel above it. Or if not, then just leave that section and for the rest of it, you put your preferred gel. So this is the result of that wash day. So I actually did like my hair fine enough at the end. My hair is really soft. There's no crunch. And you know, it's pretty defined. It's frizzy, but it's still pretty defined. So, you know, no, no huge issue with that. So this is what I'm rocking for the rest of the week. And the hole is pretty nice and everything. And my hair doesn't feel dry. So I have a soft moisturized wash and go for the week. And even though I struggle and things look really grim, I pushed through and I didn't panic too much. And this is my result. So I hope that was helpful for you. Let me know about any horror stories you had with your struggle wash day experiences. And let me know what you do to save a wash day that's kind of going downhill. <laughs> see you in the comments and see you next week. And don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Comment below and let's be friends. And subscribe to my channel for more content. Bye.